test, test, testing audio. All right, time to see if the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be worth it. I'm going to say no. I'm going to predict the price is going to be ridiculous, especially if the rumors are true that it's not going to include a hard drive. Or not a hard drive, but a, a disk drive, excuse me, a disk drive. You have to buy that separately to attach to the PS5 Pro. So, unless it's going to have outstanding specs, I'm going to say it's not going to be worth it. But, I could be wrong. The live stream will start in about 30 seconds or so, so we'll see. I mean, hopefully it'll have some technology in there for the specs to make it, I don't know run at a consistent 60 fps or or higher but then again couldn't the ps5 a uh, regular ps5 already do that i don't know i'm gonna say it's not gonna be worth it unless they're gonna have really good specs and exclusive unless, games for the ps5 the pro that cannot be played on the regular ps5 playstation 5 pro and how it advanced oh, there it is. PS5 Pro. Damn, just out with it. Oh, okay, no build up. What we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. 8 Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. Right. You can run frame rates up to 120. Which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual... And the ray tracing, which... Reflections off of water or glass. Does not really amaze me much, except for certain games like Spider-Man 2. Custom SSD can load data at breathtaking and Ratchet and Clank, of course. Ultra fast transitions between game worlds <laughs> and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it. Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the... Returnal, one of my favorite launch games for the PS5. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. I don't really care much for the DualSense. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. And Sony has not fixed the controller uh, stick drift issue. And from what I heard, they're raising the prices of the controllers, which makes no sense. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with. Graphics modes. It can right. Be a difficult choice for players. So is PS5 going to have both? Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier, and the controls less responsive. Performance right. modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run 60 frames per second. I mean, performance mode still looks decent on some games, for, for the PS5, that is. Until those frame but you do sacrifice the quality of some of the graphical fidelity. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing right. that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. So does that mean games load much faster than the regular PS5? Taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. 
And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. AI-driven upscaling. analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing, with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. At what frame rate? Amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. All right, 60 frames. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rate has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Yep. And Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Yep. PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. On PS5 Pro, we can see so, sharpness to the graphics. Is he trying to say it can do both this is the fidelity and performance? As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw Or is it more of an artificial difference? For Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Dwarf's orders. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Which means faster, fast, the faster the processing, the hotter that system's going to get. Maybe it's why they do not include a disk drive. Unless they are going to have one with the disk drive. I have that game. I have not played it yet. Bought it for 30 bucks last Black Friday. I got the uh, PS5 version. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built, and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. That's it. So there's not much of a difference. Just AI upscaling. <laughs> and uh, more extra ray tracing. <laughs> I don't see a disk drive. So how much are they going to charge people for this thing? It's going to be a ridiculous $650. That would be hilarious. Well, I'm going to say that was a disappointment, unless they're going to come out with uh, PS5 Pro exclusive video games that cannot be played on a regular PS5. Like, um, is this thing going to be needed to run Grand Theft Auto 6? I'm curious about that. Even though it most likely run on a regular PS5, so yeah. Uh, I guess the only thing to do now is wait for the uh, Switch 2 announcement. Curious to see what Nintendo plans to do with that. Hopefully Nintendo makes that system backwards compatible. 
because I have quite a decent library of Nintendo Switch games. Oh, here we go. November 7th. This year, $800? I'm sorry, what? Okay, I saw 700 but my brain is saying 800 Looks like all the IGN staff are disappointed. <laughs> they look... <ex> <laughs> Oh, they're on mute. Oh, no, they're turning up the volume. That's hilarious. $700? Can I, um... Hold on. Can I, uh, rewind that to the price, please? Uh-oh. And I just messed up the entire screen here. Okay, skip this ad. I was worried about that. Okay, where was this price point? Uh, trees and proceed. No. All right. Well, it's hard to pinpoint it. Okay, here we go. Okay, pause. Look at this. Look at what Sony is charging the consumer. For a system with very, very minimal difference. Look at this. Oh, just in time for the holiday season. Seven. Okay, 700. I don't know why my... <laughs> it's like my eyes and my brain were seeing two different things. I was like, wait a minute. I mean, yeah, technically it's 800 in other countries. $700. Well, sound off in the comments below. Are you gamers um, <laughs> planning on buying the same system that doesn't really have much of a difference from the system we already have now and does not have a disk drive from the look of it? And are you looking forward to playing this thing with <laughs> a controller that they have not fixed the stick drift issues with? Which is why I'm using the uh, the uh, DualSense Edge controller, which was not cheap. But at least when one of the sticks go bad, I can swap them out. Um, but they're having a supply and demand issues with the sticks currently. So that's a whole other thing. Um, the only thing I have to say about this is... Uh, I will be looking forward to seeing what Nintendo does with the Switch 2. <laughs> Granted, it'll be a much more, obviously, a much more improvement uh, than the current Switch. But, uh, yeah, sound off in the comments below. I mean, you got $700. No, thank you. That is money I can easily save and put towards other things like tacos. Who doesn't love tacos and pizza? We don't like junk food? Groceries, right? That money can go towards groceries. Or it can go towards your favorite hobbies. Yeah. What's funny is I... <laughs> What's funny is... um. I know of a few famous YouTubers that will most likely get this day one. Yeah. Um... Well, that's the PS5 Pro announcement. How long is this recording? 14 minutes. I'm going to go play some more uh, Space Hulk Deathwing, which is a Warhammer game. And also, I have some more demos to upload and some playthroughs I got to do, as well as an unboxing for... Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, which I will not arrive to me until next week, so unfortunately everyone else got to play that before me, but you guys know me, I'm the guy that likes to go for the physical copies of games. That's why I have not purchased 
the Black Myth Wukong game. Because I'm waiting for physical copies to be released later on, within a few months. $700. Alrighty then. Later. 